Good morning, everybody. What we have here is the Mitsubishi Freakroll A500. It's inverter drive. Well, we're gonna look to see if we can find any problems at the main terminal board. Get my meter in here. Where can I put my meter where y'all can see it? Turn that around. See if you can see that right there. There we go. Okay, we're in diode test mode. This top terminal right here, this one right here, this is R slash L1. Here is S slash L2, T slash L3. This is where the line voltage comes in to the drive to power it up. Over here on this terminal is U, next one is V, and then W. That's where your motor connects. Down here is N slash minus. That is bus ground. Here's P1 and P slash plus. They're jumped together with this bus bar right here, this metal tab. And then here's PR. And it's jumped over here. These two end terminals, they don't go anywhere, but they allow you to connect a braking resistor. Regenerative braking resistor. So let's take our red lead and put it on N slash minus. We'll take our black lead and put it on R slash L1 at 0.459. That's a good diode drop right there. Let's take our black lead and move over to S slash L2. There again, 0.460. That's good. Move our black lead to T slash L3, 0.454, that's a good diode drop. It's not shorted, your line voltage coming in is not shorted. Now let's look at the motor. Let's put our black lead on U, 0.403, that's good. V, black lead on V, 0.403, that's good. Black lead to W. 0.403 and all that with keeping the red lead on N slash minus. Now let's reverse leads. We're going to put the black lead on P slash plus and P1. That's our bus plus. And a red lead on R slash L1. 0.470. Red lead to S slash L2. 0.459. Red lead to T slash L3, 0.468. So our three phase bridge has good diode drops. Let's go to U with the red lead, 0.403. V with the red lead, 0.403. W with the red lead. 0.402. Our power module to run the motor is good. Let's put the red lead on N slash minus and leaving the black lead on P slash plus. There's the diode drop for the bus. And that's good, 0.720. Alright, no short circuits. Now we're going to hook this drive up to see if we can run it. The control voltage is powered up from these two terminals right here. This drive came in with uh, two wires. I removed them so we could diode drop these and those wires not get in our way. But sometimes you'll see that there's no wires joining these two terminals to R slash L1 and S slash L2. How do they get their voltage uh, from the line up to the control switch mode power supply? Well, do you see those two terminals down there in the bottom? They'll be jumped. This one here will be jumped to the top one. This one over here will be jumped to that top one. These two terminals down here on the bottom, let me put my meter in beep mode and uh, show you where they go. These two bottom terminals 
go right there to R slash L1. And the next one goes to L slash L2. So if you jump this one to that one and jump this one to that one, you're connecting the control switch mode power supply to the line voltage. But for some reason, this drive right here came in with wires. Let me go ahead and hook that up right there. Connect this one right there. Put the cover back on. That tightened up real good right there. There we go. Let's put that little warning cover back on. There we go. R1 slash L11 goes to R1 slash L1 right here. Let's leave it loose because we're going to have to connect the line voltage right there. R1 slash L21 goes to S slash L2 over here. Leave that one loose. Let's bring our line voltage into play. Now on this drive, the line voltage is 380 to 480 volts AC, three phase. Okay, now this line voltage is unplugged from the wall. You always want to make sure that the line voltage is turned off, and disconnected, before you go hooking anything up to the drive. You don't want to get electrocuted. Be very careful. I'm not going to hook the motor up until we've got that drive running and I've looked at the waveforms. Now let's hook up the controls. We have a switch to turn the drive on, make it run forward or reverse depending on which terminal we're connected to. We have a potentiometer that's going to provide the speed reference voltage to make the motor run faster or slower. We're going to hook our switch to the SD terminal and the STF terminal. The STF is start forward. And that's one, two, three, four, five back. One, two, three, four, five back on the bottom row. STF is right beside of it. Start forward. I'll put the diagrams to uh, for these connections at the at the end of the video. speed reference goes to terminals 5, 2, and 10 on the top row. Let's put the wiper goes to 2, and the wings of the potentiometer go to 5 and 10. That's all you need to get this drive to run. Let's go power it up. See what it does. Let's double 
check our wire before we throw the smoke at it. That's L1, L2, L3, that's good. That's going up there. Okay. Here we're going to apply 380 volts AC, three phase to the drive. Cooling fan spun up, that's good. We have display. Our power LED is lit and our alarm LED is turned off. We're going to enable it here. Alright, we just come up to 17.6 hertz. Let's go drag the oscilloscope over here. We'll look at UV and W, see what it looks like. Alright, we'll enable the drive to run. We have our 17.6 hertz on the display. And we're going to look at UV and W. Here's U to V. Looks good. Let me speed it up a little bit. Speed it up with the potentiometer till we get good trigger on that display. There we go. That's 53.75 hertz right there. That's looking at U to V. Let's go look at U to W. Okay, it looks the same. That's good. Now let's look at V to W. There we go. That looks good. Let's spread it out so you can see the PWM. There's the pulse width modulation. Okay. Let me move the camera so you can get a close-up of those waveforms. Alright, here's U to V. This is U to W. Here is V to W. I'll spread that waveform out. We'll look at the pulse width modulation. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Those are the waveforms that run that motor. Let's pull it back in. Okay, I'm going to turn off the line voltage and we'll hook up a motor and see how that motor runs. Let's connect the motor to U, V, and W.
Good run and drive. Now here's the diagram, not the complete diagram, but we'll get it all in the picture here shortly. Of the Mitsubishi Frequel A500 inverter drive. Now here you you see the three phase line voltage comes into R slash L1, S slash L2, T slash L3, and here are the jumpers, those yellow wires that go to R1 slash L11 and S1 slash L21. Those are those yellow wires. Now on this drive it was 380 volts AC to 480 volts AC. You check the data plate on your drive because some of these drives are 220 volts AC. And if you put <laughs> don't do it. If you put 380 or 480 volts AC into a 220 volts AC drive well you might as well take it out to the to the trash because it's gone <laughs> it will explode <laughs> over here is the motor on UV and W here's the STF and STR terminals that's start forward and start reverse and let me uh, move the camera down, but here it, near the bottom of the page is the SD terminal. The SD terminal is the contact input common for sync logic. Uh, that means that we're just going to pull this STF and STR to uh, uh, common ground. Let's move down there and we'll look at that SD and the potentiometer input. right here is the SD terminal that we connected STF to to make the drive run forward. It says contact input common for sync logic. Now here is terminals 10, 2, and 5. 10 is plus 5 volts. 2 is your 0 uh, to 5 volt DC or 0 to 10 volt DC speed reference input and since we're coming off of pin 10 terminal 10 we're gonna have 5 volts going in here when we max that pot out terminal 5 is your analog common and those are the three terminals that you connect your speed reference all right sun's about gone down now we got to get up and go back to work tomorrow <laughs> okay okay folks thank you very much for stopping by I always enjoy it when you come over we'll see you next time